Darryl, you've been involved in football a long time. How on earth do you sum up what you've just seen today? You go back, is it eight years ago? Pretty much the final kick. And that ghost is put to bed. Posh fans, it's put to bed. And it's put to bed with a last minute scenario. So, football gods are funny. Because you're looking at it go, we shit the bed against Doncaster. And you think, Christ, fireworks are going off, everything else. And I'm trying to be remain calm, composed all week. And then you're thinking, the last three seasons, three seasons ago, we needed Donny to screw up against Coventry. We get in the playoffs. It doesn't happen for us. Last season, we're on a really good run. You fancy us to win promotion automatically. The dreaded vote comes in. And then this season, you got the Charlton, you get that result. And then Tuesday night happens, then you're 3-0 down and you're thinking, my honest thought at the time, I'm, I'm done with football. <laughs> Honestly, like, because I'm an emotional person, so I'm done. Like, mentally, I'm done. Tuesday night, mentally, like, my wife had to check on me on Wednesday morning that I was still here, because I was so, like, gone Tuesday night after that. And then a 3-0, but for some reason today, I had a word with myself, my mindset today coming to watch, because usually I'm so stressed, and, and I was actually pretty relaxed today for some reason. And um, a 3-0, the worst part is Lincoln, you know, we speak about it all week and the Gaffer speaks to the players, they won the most penalties in the league. So you don't give them a sniff or they're going to take a penalty against you. So to do that in a stroke at half time and then to go 3 0 down. And we probably had the better chances before that, you know, we were playing pretty well before he scored. But then you go 3 1 and you're thinking, 27 minutes, 20, and no, I was probably, yeah, 28 minutes yeah. on the clock. You know, we score again here, ourselves could go. I mean, this could be really, really interesting because. Our fans have stopped cheering outside the stadium with three nil. God bless them. They're all packing up to go home. And three one, I can hear a murmur. At three two, you can hear the cheerings back on. And then, it, and then with like probably four minutes to go, John was basically from one yard. You know, hit the bar. Um, he's dead in on goal, but he couldn't get to the ball. Then you think your chance is gone. And then pretty much the last minute of injury time, he wins. It's like an Aguero moment, isn't it? You know, Sammy wins the penalty. And then you're just sitting there, frozen in time, like, this is a lot of pressure. This is a football club's legacy on the line here. Because if we lose, and Lincoln battered Charlton on Tuesday, never mind needing a point with Donny, we're going to have to go there and win. Donny don't like us, so they're going to do everything, they're, they're going to play like Brazil again. But their players came alive, they won 1-12 and, and suddenly they were playing, you know, as well as any team on Tuesday night, because it's us. So they're going to do the same. So you don't fancy taking that trip. For John, I did the penalty. Then you're, you're enjoying the moment, but then you're thinking there's a minute left. Everyone needs to focus. The gaffer's trying to bring a sub on. I'm screaming down at him, don't make the sub. Now, I've never picked a team in my life, but what I'm trying to say to him is, don't give that fucking referee the opportunity to add another 30 seconds, or, you know? And in fairness, he said to me after, you're fucking right, I don't know what I was thinking. He, in fact, he said, did I put him on in the end? I'm like, no. And then Joe obviously fucking mishits the thing, and I'm thinking, if that goes out for a corner, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. And then he blows. And, I said earlier, if we'd drawn nil-nil compared to how it ended, the emotion, that's one of the, that's me and the gaffer, it's probably the best promotion ever. So it's my, f as, as I own our fourth promotion in 14 seasons or whatever, to be back in the champ, it's all I've wanted is to get the club back. And now you're thinking, well, it doesn't matter what I'm thinking, but yeah. So that's all I've ever wanted is the club to get back in the championship, you know, um, because you always feel responsible um, when the club got relegated and, and I want us in the champ I'm so happy for the manager, I'm so happy for the players, I'm really happy for Randy and Jason, because that's their first promotion. I've had a few, so you'd be greedy and whatever, but... And then my wife I'm speaking to afterwards, you know, she's crying, and she's really special because the shit she's had to put up with me through the highs and lows of on in Peterborough, she deserves the sainthood. And we've got a lot of big stuff going on at home, kids are graduating, stuff's going on at school, and I'm over here with the football club as usual. The family have come second, and, and I have to really start putting them first a little bit because that was, yeah, she was emotional, and, and I'm so happy for her, but she's just been brilliant for me, as have my family. So I'm emotional talking about it now. It means so much. I really thought we were going to blow it again because the, the after Crystal Palace, the negative person in your mind is like, you're going to like blow this, you know, everyone's going to be laughing at you, and oh, Peter, but this, and Peter, but that. And, and I remember the abuse I took last year because I fought for us to play and as it turns out I was right it was perfectly safe to play and 
I felt we'd had a promotion robbed and I became this kind of main figurehead that people wanted me on all the shows and out front and centre in the media to make sure we played on and you'd all those clubs vote to not play football and at that point I thought about I'm done with football and I gave it another go, one go and I was like if we're going to do it we've got to do it now, it's now or never and we worked really hard recruiting and putting the squad together and and now this is the this is the final part of that we won promotion on merit it wasn't handed to us uh, it wasn't voted on there was no points per game scenario we did it through blood sweat and tears the players went to places today that had never been deep and it's easy to be critical of your players but walk in their shoes five minutes you know and, and they've done it all season uh, and I'm so happy for them and their families and I'm really really happy for everyone and, and the biggest gutter today the most devastating thing is not having our fans here you know not having our, I know we saw them outside but not having them in the stadium I mean and there's no reason they shouldn't be here they should be here let's, let's just face facts you know what I mean they should all be here and I'm gutted they've missed this so to win promotion during Covid with everything all the odds and everything going on is, is almost a miracle and I'm so looking forward, I said to them out there, I'll see you in August. The club will see you in August. You will be back. Uh, and, and that's it. So, sorry, I'm rambling on here. Ask away, sorry. Let's sum up Darren Ferguson. That's, uh, I mean, no manager comes back to a club three times and no manager is successful ever when they come back twice. I mean, sum up what he's achieved. He's brilliant. He, he after the disappointment on Tuesday, I went to see him after the game, make sure he was okay. He was okay, he was fine. And I knew, and I said all along, we've got a really, really experienced, calm manager. All promotions we've won, he's been really calm. A lot calmer than me, a lot calmer than everyone. And I'm so happy for him and Nick, his wife and kids, because he's a really, really good manager who deserves to manage in the championship. And because football is not always about you get what you deserve. It's, you could be a name or a face or whatever. He deserves a bigger club than Peterborough. He does, but he loves our football club. And he's really good for our football club. And I want him to be a top half manager in the champ because what happened was really unjust. And he's gone away and he's won it elsewhere, a promotion with other clubs. He's come back. You know, my partners love him. He's perfect for our club. But also, massive respect to Mark Robson, his staff, everyone around him, the sports science, the physiotherapist, a lot of new staff came in. Mark Tyler, I'm missing people there. You know, they've been brilliant as a team. You know, you got a team on the pitch, you got a team off the pitch, you got a team in the boardroom, you got Baz. You got Bob, you got Liz, who's like fucking massive part of the club. You got all these people who are in like little teams. Then you got me, Jason, and Randy, the team then you call the owners. And every part, you could even go to the media team, you guys. You know, the shit you've been through, furlough, not furlough, fucking some money, no, you know, less money. We've all been through, I mean, we've all gone to places we haven't wanted to go, right? Like the players had to go deep today to places they've never been. And this is the pinnacle to do this and get there. Uh, and I'll say it, and I'll say this very seriously, we don't want to go there and be uh, a punching bag. We want to go there and move the club to the next level. And I'll finish by saying three monumental things have happened this year. It's a big part because of my partners. One is the promotion. One is our academy is going to become Cat 2. And the final bit is we bought the stadium back. In a pandemic. In a pandemic, we bought the stadium, 5 million quid. We've upgraded our academy to the second highest category you can have and we've won promotion to the championship. I call that a trifecta, a triple crown, a trinity. And finally I'll say, Johnson Clark Harris, that man's got some serious fucking melons on him <laughs> because there's nobody, I mean nobody, would want to take that penalty. <laughs> You've got a club's legacy on the, on, on your, on the line, <laughs> you know, and he's missed a couple and no problem. I mean, best player in League One, another a gem that we acquired. Off the, off the factory line and uh, I'm really happy for him and so many of the boys and there'll be more stories about I, I did a diary since the vote last year so I'll probably reveal lots of bits from the diary in the coming couple of months for now I'm going to sign off and I'm going to say Peterborough fans I love you to bits um, we'll talk soon uh, and I wish everyone the best you know because you deserve this as fans what you've been through um, and a special final mention to Mike one of my old Guys used to work for me, who has pancreatic cancer. And he was with me today. And that was for him. 
you know, that was like, so I don't know if that's going to be the last game he ever watches. He's fighting, he's fighting hard. And the players fought hard for him as well. He was emotional at the end, so that was, that was fitting. Thank you, everybody. Love you all to bits.